Welcome back everyone to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Dog Park by Birdwood Games. This is a game about walking dogs in the park designed by Lottie and Jack Hazel. It's 1-4 to four players, aged 10 up, and the playtime is roughly 40-80 to 80 minutes. The game features a large number of cards, set collection and resource management mechanics. This is actually my first Kickstarter game to arrive. I do have others on the way, but you know Kickstarter, when they're going to turn up you have no idea. So I was very happily surprised when this turned up uh, the other day. When I backed this game a long time ago, I was instantly intrigued just for the artwork and the premise and the idea of taking a game like Wingspan, but making it with dogs, walking dogs in the park. Um, I like the idea of a game like this. I like set collection games, I like games with managed resources, have a lot of car play. I just thought it looked like a great game. The designers, Lottie and Jack Hazel, have been great on the way, very informative, very supportive of the community. I really appreciate that. So without further ado, before I go into the game review and what I like and don't like and break down the game, I'm going to set the game up and show you how a typical round of Dog Park will play out. Okay, so here we have Dog Park set up for a single player game. So this is the main board here. Now down here we have space for the dog deck and location deck. Space for dog cars down here called the field. This is our sort of VP tracker, reputation tracker. We will start on five. Over here are the breed expert cards shuffled randomly. This is a sort of main park area with the location resource bonuses and some extra little pieces there. Forecast cards and the round tracker. To the right I have my sort of main board, my kennel, my starting resources of two sticks, two balls, a treat and a dog. And my bidding sort of token, kennel there and my resources. Let's briefly go over the board. So down here is where the dogs go. The more players the more dogs. So with a solo player game we have three dogs down here. And if we just show you some of the dogs. So Here's a sample dog here. We have a nice little Polish lowland sheepdog. So top left up there is the dog type. You can see there it's pastoral. Now this relates to the breed expert cars down here. As you can see there, the top one is gun dog and pastoral is third down with six VP points. At the end of the game, we all get all our cards we have over the game, add them up and the most of each one gets more points. So if I had the most pastoral dogs at the end of the game, I gain six VP points. If I had the most gun dogs, I get 8 VP points. If there's a tie, the push points are shared. So back to the dog over here. You have a nice artwork there. To the left of the dog is the resource cost to walk the dog. This is important. So you don't have to pay resources to get the dog, but to take it for a walk, you've got to pay those resources. So this dog requires a stick, a ball, and a toy. At the bottom of the card down there is some flavour text. And over here are its abilities. This has the ability Hoarder. So this says here, during foul scoring, Gain one VP for every two leftover resources assigned to this dog. Maximum of six. End of the game, I can assign leftover resources to the dog and gain more points. So check this card over here, the German short-haired pointer. So this has eager. So during selection, so that's when you choose a dog to walk, when you place this dog on the lead, gain a ball resource. And lastly, the bull terrier has slowpoke. When walking this dog, if you are the last walker on the park, gain two reputation points. So this is how the dogs work. This is the sort of auto walker dice. I'll tell you how the AI picks cards and moves. So explained how the reputation works, how the breeding expert card dog works. So I'll see the higher the chart they are, more points they are worth. This is your sort of score tracker. And this is also what you're going to use to bid. So when you bid on dogs, you'll use your reputation here to bid. To the left here is the space of the dog deck. To the left here is location cards. The location cards are shuffled randomly and placed down. And there are two types, one for more player counts. But these basically give you a brief layout of how the park will change each round. So every single round you place this card over and place resources or tokens on spots. So I've got a ball there, I've got a swap dog token there, and a stop token there. As you can see there, this changes. Now I do still get the resources. So if I went here, I still get a stick, but also get a ball permanently for that round. How this works is when we move our player, we can move any space you want, branching path, Land on a space, get the reward, keep going. When we get here, there's four slots. So there's three points, two points, one point and a, a lead on a dog, and then the last one is minus one point. So it's like a sort of weird race. Up here are forecast cards, and they affect each round. Now, you can optionally not play these if you don't want to, for a sort of simpler game. So for instance, the second round one here says, during home time, dogs without leads lose two points instead of one. Just how, They just change how the game plays. And also here's a nice little bird token, see that there, which tells you how the rounds go along, which is quite nice too. 
And to the right of here is obviously where our kennel for slots for dogs. We can hold eight dogs maximum and get two per turn. And space here for dogs we're going to walk. So dog parks played over four rounds with each has four phases. Recruitment, selection, walking and home time. So recruitment is the first part. So what we do here is this is where we all recruit dogs. What you do is you take your dial. You pick a dog secretly. You, you bid victory points. So I can build to five on there. And you place your little walker down. And bid a dog you want. So say I bid on the pastoral dog there. The Polish uh, sheepdog. And I wanted to bid say three points. Other players can bid two. If you're playing with less than sort of three players. Two or less. You use the auto walker. The AI opponent. And what they do is they don't bid. They don't collect points or bid on cards so much. They just choose the card that's the highest up on here. If there's a tie and two more than two AI players, next one down. So for instance, if I had an AI player, the first one would pick the gun dog. The next one would pick going down no hound. They go pastoral with me. So I bid three on the sheep dog. Roll a dice. It's a four. I lost. They gain that dog. The player got the other dog. I get left over dog. You always get a dog either way. You get a dog. You place it in your little area down here you repeat this round again so you get two per round over four rounds you'll get eight cards in total some dogs may have a recruitment bonus which you do now other than that you go to the next phase which is selection this way you choose the dogs you want to walk so let's say i did get the pastoral uh sheep dog i want to take it for a walk now i can pay the resource i can pay a stick i can pay a ball i can pay a treat what you do is you put a lead on the dog to show you're taking the dog for a walk this means this dog is selected to go for a walk. If I can't afford the resource cost for the dog, it cannot go for a walk. Next up is the walking phase. And you just choose a number between one and four. Remove my spaces. So I'm going to choose two. I go there. I get a ball resource. If I had AI players, they roll. They move along. The reason this is because AI players can then get to the end first, get rich points. They can also land on the same space as you. Cost you points. Move us along here, you can swap dogs over, you can get extra resources, stuff, extra virtue points, you can draw cards from the deck, get to the end and get points. Once that's over, it's home time. So this way you take all dogs you've walked back to your kennel. But any dogs that weren't walked this round will lose one point. Those poor dogs were not walked. After four rounds of four phases, we're going to the game end and file scoring. What we do here is we count up our reputation. Reputation from dogs with any foul scoring abilities. Reputation from one breed expert awards, reputation from completed objective cards, and then lastly, one reputation for every five remaining resources. And that's it. That's basically how Dog Park is played. Now back to the review. And back onto the review. So, Dog Park, what do I think of this game? Well, this game quite surprised me. I was kind of worried because all in all, it's a very pretty game. The watercolour paintings, the idea of dogs. You know, I'm a sucker for dogs, so it lured me in a little bit. And some people might be thinking, the game looks great, does it play well though? Because games can look good, but not play good. And I was actually very surprised by how this game played, I actually really enjoyed this game. I was thinking, would the hype be too much? Would I have you know, put my faith in a game just purely on looks? But no, it is actually a quite enjoyable game, it really surprised me. So first of all, let's do the pros of the game and what I like about the game. So. First of all, the big obvious thing is the look of the game and the artwork. The artwork is beautiful. I mean, I say it a lot about games, but the watercolour paintings of these dogs is stunning. There's so many dogs, so many breeds. Breeds didn't even know existed. There's just hundreds and hundreds of dogs in this game. It's really great seeing them too. And it's really nice if you're actually a dog lover and you have dogs yourself or you want dogs. This is a great game for you because you're going to see dogs that you love and dogs that you like and dogs that you want. You might see a dog and think, oh, I love those dogs. You know, I want that dog for myself. We might have a dog that was like a childhood pet and it's like, you know, it's like a nice nostalgia kind of rem reminiscing about the dog. It's nice to have that dog in your collection because you are collecting dogs into your kennel. That does feel quite nice to do that. Another good thing about this game, which is a bit unlike Wingspan, whereas the birds of Wingspan, even though some that are really nice and I do really like, they aren't great cards, so you're not going to play them much. So a bird you might like, you're not going to play. Whereas in here, all the dogs are great. They all are quite balanced, very different. I mean, obviously, some dogs serve better purposes for how the game plays, but there's not really a bad card to play in this game. My biggest praise for this game is the rulebook. The rulebook is written extremely well. I was able to set up this game very fast, learn it really quickly, and have no issues pretty much with the game. A bit of back and forth occasionally, but other than that, I was completely fine. The rulebook is great. It's written clearly, the phases are listed clearly, everything's just categorised nicely. 
lots of examples and diagrams and loads of little tips as well to help you out for the game to make sure you're doing this and keep an eye on this and you want to do this for this reason so i do want to give massive applause for whoever wrote the rulebook for this game it is phenomenal it's a perfectly written rulebook the game's inserts great too little dog bowl tray things um the pieces are not too many the game sets up quite fast um you can get into the game really quickly much like wingspan um you have a row of cards and some resources and that's pretty much it you're ready to go this game for me has a nice blend of complexity it's not too simple whereas you play it and you think players who like a more advanced games won't really enjoy it much but also it's not too heavy so people who are a bit new to the game and are intrigued by these beautiful dogs are going to be able to play this game quite nicely and there are some variables you can use you have to use these sort of forecast cards to make some challenges you can make it a bit easier so i do really appreciate that the game has a nice perfect middle ground it's not too hard not too easy it's going to be a great game for newcomers to get into the mechanics of collecting cards and managing resources but at the same time for capacity players too there's a lot of things there such as the binning phase and the walking a dog phase it can be very competitive in that element that brings me on to the phases i love the phases each phase feels like a short little mini game they all feel like a different little mini game and i love that so for instance the bidding phase is great you're bidding on dogs you want so you but you bid victory points reputation it's as good as if you are in the lead you want dogs those points you're in the lead by you have to spend so players who are a bit behind have a chance to catch up here and what's good about bidding on these cards is it, you bid in secret and the cards you want can change you might want cards for a certain breeding category you need to get an award you might want cards that you can afford, cards that go well with abilities you might, you might need or you quite like the sound of. And what's great is you will reveal at the same time and you will pick, get the cards. So it's a really nice little interactive, um, competitive element to the game. Introducing newer players to a sort of bidding mechanic of a game. Uh, but done in a way that's easy and accessible for all new players. Next up is the dog selection part which is quite simple. You just pay the resources for the dogs you want. And this is where managing your resources comes in handy because you have to have the resource to pay for the dogs to walk them and obviously you can walk many dogs as you want you can even walk the same dog again if you want to but dogs you don't walk lose points and this is a little thing that kind of makes you feel a bit bad here but the dogs you don't walk get stuck in the kennel and left behind and you feel so you feel so guilty because they've left in the kennel it makes you feel really bad because you're out on a nice day going for a walk of all your corgis and dalmatians and cock spaniels and stuff they're stuck at home in the kennel and it makes you feel really guilty uh, so that's like a nice simple phase and the dog walking phase i love this part too you have a sort of path a branching path across the board and you can move across this board as much as you want you can go quite fast you can go quite slow and it's sort of like a bizarre race to the finish and i do like this because if you, if you finish first it's great you get a bare choice for reward but you can take your time get rewards get bonuses you can sort of see what resources you need you can take your time with this you can there's no rolling dice no randomness to this only stipulation is if someone's already on a spot you want to take you have to lose a point a virtual point to land that space so collecting resources and getting to the end of this phase is really quick and easy and plays really nice and lastly the sort of hometown phase where you sort of take the dogs back and get your rewards so i do like about the game the phases all feel like nice little mini games they play nice it plays smoothly and there's lots of ways to score too and pass to take even though it's not an overly complex game there's a lot of little things here that sort of add to the game's replay value and variety the park cards um, change how the resources on the board are put out um, the forecast cards add little unique bonuses and challenges to each round how you have the breeding cards uh, little cards at the side there to see as the most cards in the game can change up a little bit too the cards all have nice abilities too that aren't too complex easy to understand and bold keywords but even though there's a lot of abilities on these cards, I didn't find myself overwhelmed. I didn't find myself constantly looking at reference guides and the back of the instructions to understand what the cards meant. It was all clearly written out. It was all easy to understand and I got the game straight away. I like the game's interaction with the bidding phase and the walking phase. It's not too much. It's not too much where it's competitive and it might ruin someone's game and slow them down a little bit. But it's not a game where it's like a solitaire experience. You are quite involved in the game because you will bid on dogs. You will get in people's way on the path and, you know, get certain rewards they want instead. And after all, you are competing for those victory points, and you are competing for those breeding uh, expert rewards at the, end of, at the end of the game. So if someone's collecting, say the top of the chart is, say, hound-type dogs, and you're going for the hounds, and also going for the hounds too. So it's kind of like a, a fun little competitive element to the game there. I do like that. It's quite nice. Um, also, the game is, is a bit luck-based because of the cards, but it isn't too heavily dependent on luck either. Luck is a big factor here, but it's not a determining factor how the game plays. Yes, you have random cards. Yes, the resource abilities can change, so you could get unlucky what you need. 
but at the same time because of the walking phase is quite free and relaxed um, and there's lots of ways to score points it doesn't feel like the luck element overtakes the fun of the gameplay. And lastly I want to mention the game's solo mode, it is a beat your own score kind of mode but there are challenge cards too and have sorts of little goals on there to achieve it before the game ends where you can't win. I do like that, the AI parents are easily handled, they'll bid on cards for you with just a dice roll, the dice roll determines how they move on the park and block paths for you as well, they can get to the finish for you and collect the rewards. At the end of the game you count up their cards and they can get certain awards and beat you for the score bonuses at the end. So I do quite like how the AI mode is handled, it's very easy to manage, very simple, plays really fast. So now on to any negatives for Dog Park. I mean, there's not too much really here to, to talk about really. I mean, if I could nitpick, I mean, yeah, it's a bit of a look on the cards. I do wish the cards had a bit more variety of their abilities. Um, much like a wingspan, some abilities are quite similar, but they have a bit of variety. It might say like, one might say draw a card and discard a card, one might say draw two cards or draw two cards and do this. With Dog Park, the abilities are all more or less the same. There's only a few abilities and they don't have that much variety, but it's just a little nitpicky kind of thing I could really think of. If you don't like dogs, you might not like this game, that's another thing I could say. If, you're a, if you hate dogs, you probably won't like Dog Park. Um, the idea of taking dogs for a walk might um, put you off a little bit. It is a very cutesy kind of, you know, family friendly kind of game. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I love, I love this game, I think it's a really fun game. But if you are into sort of more heavy strategy games, um, a bit more play interaction, more direct, probably going to enjoy it as much. Um, but other than that, I can't really fault this game too much, really. I mean, I'm trying to think of things, and I try to think of things I could nitpick against the game, but I really can't. Bill World Games here made a really great first game. Well designed, um, mechanically sound, beautifully drawn, uh, great components, fantastic, smooth, fluid gameplay. It has a lot of cards, um, a lot of replay value, the theme's very accessible, very inviting. Younger players are going to like this game too. Experienced players get a kick out of this as well because of the, the bidding mechanics and the interaction of the players and trying to get a high score is quite satisfying, quite competitive. So, final thoughts for Dog Park. Um, this is my first Kickstarter and I wanted to nitpick a few things and try to find some negatives to the game. There's not a lot there really, it's, it's just a really fun game. I really enjoy this game, I think it's a great sort of Euro set collection, recent management game. That's a perfect difficulty, not too heavy, not too light, great for newer players. Um, the rules are written very well, easy to understand, difficult to master. Games I could compare it to is obviously Wingspan, maybe Meadow, maybe Everdell. Those kind of games, sort of set collection, managing your resources and collecting cards. Not too complex, but a lot of depth there, a lot of ways to gain points. And then lastly, to give Dog Park a final score, I've got to give this game a nice, big, solid A. Uh, I really enjoy this game. I hope you guys get a chance to find Dog Park and play this game. It's a wonderful game. Um, like I say, if you like Everdell and Meadow, Wingspan, that kind of style of games, that kind of theme, that kind of difficulty, you're going to love this game. If you love dogs and animals and nature and the sort of art style, you're going to love this game too. If you like competitive games, resource management and set collection, you're going to love this game as well. And that is it for my review of Dog Park by Bill World Games. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, any questions about this game, comment down below. I might do a solo playthrough soon. And as always, like and subscribe and thank you for watching.